So, without more ado, let's get stuck straight in. Now, the purpose of the risk theme is to identify in the first place, to assess risks, and then to control them. Now, we'll learn that there are two flavours of risk, if you will. Negative threats, which you're most familiar with in the use of the word risk, and positive impacts called an opportunity. The aspect that bonds these two together is the aspect of uncertainty. And as a result of identifying, assessing and controlling, approve the ability of the project to be successful. Let's define then that a risk is an uncertain event or set of events that, if they should occur, will have an effect on the project's objectives. And it's important to consider the difference here between an issue and a risk. A risk, of course, as you can see, is something which hasn't happened yet, and it may or may not happen at some point in the future. But if it does occur, then it will have a negative impact if it's a threat, or a positive impact if it's an opportunity. Compare and contrast that, if you will, with an issue, which of course is something which has already happened and we need to deal with. So let's look at some of the broad aspects of risks and risk management. Risk is inevitable because projects enable change and hence you will always have uncertainty, which of course is risk. It makes sense to assume that every project you will ever work on or with will have aspects of risk. And risk management should be systematic, not based on chance. We need to have a system in place for dealing with risks. And I'm going to introduce to you the Prince2 approach. Risk management is first identifying all of the known risks, then assessing them in terms of their probability and impact, and then controlling them by taking appropriate responses. Because you see, all risks threaten in some way one or more of the project's objectives. And I'll remind you what those are shortly. Risk management should be cost effective and support good decision making. You see, in managing risk and carrying out the responses, this will consume effort and hence cost and time. It's therefore important to achieve a balance between the cost of the risk occurring and the cost of the actions to manage it. And because this factor is considered at regular points throughout the project, this will of course support good decision making. The objectives are to determine in the first place the cause of each risk, the likelihood of each risk occurring or probability if you will, the impact of each risk, the timing when it occurs and then making a choice about which is the most appropriate response. PRINCE2 has several responses for either negative threats or positive opportunities and we'll look at those in detail in the next two modules. The management of risk is an ongoing activity throughout the project. Risk identification, to start with, should not just occur at the beginning of the project. The reason being is that throughout the life of the project, risks may change. They may become more likely, less likely, or their impacts may be different, should they still occur. But also throughout a project, new risks will arise, either because they weren't present at the beginning, or because it was not possible to identify them. And of course, part of risk management is implementing responses and ensuring they have the desired effect. And hence, they need to be continually managed throughout the project. Effective risk management is mandatory. You'll remember the PRINCE2 principle of continued business justification to ensure that the business case remains viable. You see, since risks potentially affect the project's objectives, if you don't have effective risk management, you can never be certain that the project will meet those objectives and hence maintain a viable business case. So, the definition of a risk, it constitutes the probability of a threat or an opportunity occurring and the magnitude of its impact on the project objectives. There are two flavours. A negative threat, which means it's an uncertain event which, if it occurred, would have a negative impact on one or more of the objectives of the project. Or an opportunity, again uncertain, but in this case, if it occurred, it would have a positive impact on the project. We would want to, in carrying out effective risk management, 
to minimise threats and to maximise opportunities. So what are the objectives? You'll recall the six variables of any project and of course risks could impact any one or more of these. And for risk management to be effective, risks therefore need to be identified, assessed and controlled. Identifying of course is naming and describing each risk so that everyone has a common understanding of what that risk is. Assessed in terms of its probability, its immediacy, we'll learn that the word used for this is proximity, in other words when from the present time if this risk should occur, will it occur, and the overall level of risk to the project called aggregated risk. Because a project will have typically many risks, we need to rank them in these terms. And controlling risks is to identify the appropriate response for each. Assign risk owners. You see, although the project manager is a central figure here in terms of managing risks, a risk owner may be the project manager themselves, it may be members of the project board, or it could be members of the specialist team, or any other appropriate stakeholder. And of course controlling means not just identifying the responses and making sure they're carried out, but also making sure that they are monitored and controlled. In other words, the responses have the desired effect on each risk.